Good morning, everyone, and thanks for attending this session about the Indus Seals, organized by my dear friend and esteemed colleague, Ray Jameson. I'm very sorry I've not been able to attend in person, but I will be available for questions at the end of the presentation. Today, I will show a summary of my research on the Indus clay ceilings, focusing in particular on the discovery context of the cluster of about 70 ceilings found in the so-called warehouse of Lothal. Before starting, I would like to praise the memory of the late Enrica Fiandra, to whom we literally owe the methodological approach for studying clay ceilings. I could have not written a single word on this subject without her pioneering works in Pestos, Charisokta and, above all, Aslantete. I was lucky enough to have Enrica as external tutor for my master thesis. In fact, back in January 2005, with just one week notice, the late Mauricio Tosi sent me to Delhi and then to Ahmedabad and Lothal to document the clay ceilings out at the site for my master thesis. Once considered in all their components, clay ceilings are proved to be key objects for understanding several aspects of the social economic organization of ancient civilizations. In the Indus civilization in particular, they allow understanding the main function of stamped seals. Moreover, they provide indirect information about the Indus storage technology and facilities. Through comparison and contrast with better known contexts in Western Asia, they ultimately enable to infer information about the administrative organization and bureaucratic procedures in use at Indus civilization sites. The use of clay ceilings to secure the shipment of commodities and possibly account for their receipt from external trading entities is generally admitted based on a very limited number of cases and theoretical arguments. However, According to research outcomes from thoroughly documented excavation throughout Western Asia, in the prehistory and protohistory, but also in modern ethnographic context, they were commonly used as guaranteed tools to detect unauthorized access to the contents of warehouses and movable containers used as secondary storage units within them. Therefore, rather than merely discouraging tampering, Clay ceilings were physical administrative documents that established the assumption of official responsibility by individuals under whose seals or combination of seals certain goods were stored. Once removed from the closure devices they guaranteed, clay ceilings were systematically kept in special rooms for a certain amount of time to allow for accounting operation and the settlements of any possible legal disputes. Given their extensive and standardized application with minor variation in different geographical regions and timeframes, the late Maurizio Tosi and I had named this multi tier sequential administrative procedure the transcultural administrative ceiling system, the various stages of which can be summarized as follows. The clay ceiling securing the closure of the door of a storage space was removed by the official or officials in charge of its administrative management. One or more containers of commodities were removed or deposited under the responsibility of the manager or the clay ceiling or ceilings securing the closure of, of a specific container or containers were removed to collect or deposit specific commodities by the official in charge of them and or by the storeroom manager. The container or containers were reclosed by applying a new clay lamp sealed by the official or officials in charge of the commodities and or by the storeroom manager. The door of the storage space was closed, a new clay lamp was applied to its closure device and sealed by the storeroom manager. The clay ceiling or ceilings removed in the previous stages were temporarily kept in a dedicated archive for accounting. 
Finally, at the end of a definite administrative period, the archived clay ceilings were discharged in a specific landfill. The fundamental concepts and procedures described in the previous slides and often been neglected or misunderstood in most old studies about stamp seals and clay ceilings founded in the civilization sites. Despite the frequent discovery of stamp seals, clay ceilings are not as frequent in the industrialization as in Western Asia. This evidence has led to much speculation about the actual use of seals and ceilings in the industrial civilization. However, even the handful of clay ceilings published in the first excavation reports of Mwenjodaro and Arapa provided the image of a very sophisticated and advanced administrative technology that could have not developed from an occasional use and without firmly established bureaucratic protocols. They include a specimen with multiple impressions of different squares and rectangular stamped seals, and even one example stamped twice with the same seals and with Indus sign scratch on its back after being removed from the container it sealed, apparently a door. Moreover, there is now solid evidence for the use of clay ceilings in the Greater Indus Valley already during the formative stages of the Indus civilization during the first centuries of the third millennium BC. Seal based administration was evidently a fundamental aspect in fostering the social, economic, and political integration of the different regional cultures that populated the Indus Valley in the fourth and early third millennium BC. Therefore, why do we not have in the Greater Indus Valley cluster of clay ceilings comparable in number to those found in, at contemporaneous sites in Western Asia? Have we only seen the tip of the iceberg due to methodological lacks, or are there more complex systemic reasons? It is not worth it to observe that the largest cluster of clay ceilings ever found in Western Asia have been discovered in sites or buildings destroyed by fire, such as the Neolithic settlement at Sabi Abyad in northern Syria, the Minoan palace of, of, palaces of Pestos and Gnosis on Crete, and the late Uruk palace at, of Arslan Tepe in eastern Anatolia. In this light, it is probably no coincidence that the earliest clay ceiling ever discovered to have been stamped with the standard Hindu seal was found damped in the period to earth at Arapa. Similarly, the largest cluster of some 70 clay ceilings ever found at an Indus civilization site came from the so-called burned warehouse at Losal. The small number of clay ceilings found at Indus civilization site could therefore also be evaluated based on the fact that evidence for major fire events is almost absent at Indus civilization sites. Unless intentionally heated or accidentally burned, small clay ceilings were probably too brittle to remain intact in anthropic deposit in the Greater Indus Valley. According to Ernest McKay, some of the clay ceilings found at Changdaro, being imperfectly fired, dissolved in the water in which they were being cleaned. It is likely that this fact also severely impacted the possibility of recognizing and collecting clay ceiling with the excavation method adopted in the first half of the last century. However, even taking into account the impact of specific taxonomic features and post-depositional events, the present quantities, which involve clusters of several thousands at Bronze Age sites in Western Asia, compared to less than a hundred in the Greater Indus Valley, still suggest the likely existence of fundamental systemic differences between administrative practices in use in the two regions during the third millennium BC. The detailed morphological and functional study of the clay ceilings found at Lothal could therefore provide fundamental insights into understanding how the administrative procedures of the Indus civilization may or may not fit into the so-called transcultural administrative ceiling system. Excavation carried out by S. R. Rao of the Archaeological Survey of India between 1955 and 1962 at Lothal in Gujarat uncovered a total of 93 clay ceilings, 
we still represent the largest number of this artifact class ever found at a single Indian civilization site. In the southeastern part of the Acropolis, Rauf found a heavily eroded Madrid platform measuring 50 by 40 meters, which sustained the damaged ruins of an anomalous structure, interpreted by the excavator as a warehouse. The structure is currently composed of 12 quadrangular Madrid podia arranged in three rows of four blocks each, all consistently measuring about 3.5 meters on the side and just over 1 meter in height. This podia, which will probably have supported a wooden superstructure, are separated by about 1 meter wide corridors of baked brick floors. Thick layers of ash and charcoal Pieces of charred beams and hundreds of burnt clay lamps with the impression of grain husks and reeds fill the corridors between the different podia, suggesting that the building was destroyed by a major fire at the end of the third millennium BC. At the southern end of the corridor between the innermost podia, Rao discovered about 70 heavily burnt clay ceilings distributed in several layers over a small area of about one square meter. This information was confirmed by workers who participated in the excavation that I interviewed uh, on the site in 2007. Mortimer Wheeler suggested that when the warehouse caught fire, clay ceilings of normal Indus type had fallen from the storage base into the ducts. Although green, then clay ceilings most likely were felt in between the mud bricks podia when the wooden superstructure of the building burned and collapsed, their tight spatial arrangement, confined to less than one square meter, suggests that they had already been removed from the container they had seals to be kept temporarily in a small archive for accounting purposes. Based on functional analysis, the 70 clay ceilings found in the so-called warehouse were used to secure the closure of rooms and various types of lockers and movable containers, such as pottery jars, wooden boxes, and coarse cloth sacks. Even if stored tightly, all these packages, plus the doors and various larger structures like cabinets, cages, etc., would certainly have occupied a larger part of the upper storage area, thus resulting in a more widespread discovery of the clay ceilings between the different podia. Moreover, while the functional study of the clay ceilings revealed that they were primarily used to secure the closure of ceramic containers, the excavators did not report the discovery of any shirts in their vicinity. All consider the post-depositional setting revealed by Rao in the warehouse of Lothal closely resembles the context carefully excavated in room A340 of the palatial complex at Arslantepe in Turkey. Annexed to Temple B, redistribution room A340 yielded a total of 175 clay ceilings, including ceilings still attached to large pottery jars and ceilings already removed from the containers they secured. The removed ceilings were found over just more than one square meter in the northeastern corner near the door leading to the courtyard. What is interesting to notice here is that the removed clay ceilings were found interspersed with layers of fallen debris, suggesting that they may have fallen down from an upper story where they were temporarily stored for accounting purposes when the whole monumental complex was destroyed by fire. However, where room A340 contains several jars with clay ceilings still in place on their closure, in addition to the clay ceilings, Rao reported having found in the warehouse only a riveted carinated copper vessel, which may have been used as a storage container and been therefore sealed, and some shared of glazed sintered reserve slipware. According to Rao, the reserve slipware at Arapa, Mwenjodaro, and Lothal was imported in the course of foreign trade from an area where it was very popular. In this light, its discovery in the warehouse would have therefore linked the building to the administration of seafaring trade with Mesopotamia. However, there is no confirmation that this shirt can be associated to the warehouse. 
In fact, RAO arbitrarily extended the warehouse over the entire platform to a total area of about 50 by 40 meters, well beyond the 17 by 12 meters occupied by the 12 mud brick podia he excavated. Indeed, none of these five shirts of reserved sleepwear is assigned to a square compatible with the actual warehouse. Moreover, comparative technological, morphological, and stylistic consideration on the reserved wear found in the Near East and in the Greater Indus Valley, complemented by recent geochemical and petrographic analysis of samples from the Indus site of Bagashra and Shikarpur, suggest that this skilled ceramic technology was developed independently in the two regions. Most of the clay ceilings found at Lothal were very complex, combining multiple impressions from different angles caused by contact with different materials and structural elements. The Lothal assemblage showed the application of clay ceilings on a wide range of storage devices, some of which were clearly different from those reconstructed from sites in Western Asia and cannot be easily defined in the absence of further information. Careful, direct analysis of the morphology of the backs and sides of the clay ceilings showed that they were attached to different fastening systems for the closure of doors, like peg on walls and wooden lockers, structures, such as architectural elements or part of furniture, and various movable containers, such as pottery jars, wooden boxes, and cloth bags. According to Rao, a careful examination of the impressions of the backs of the terracotta ceilings from Lothal has revealed the process of sealing cargoes against pilfering. He reiterated in several paragraphs the idea that the clay ceilings found at Lothal derived from the securing of imported cargoes against tampering. He remarked that the fact that all terracotta ceilings bear impression of seals other than those found at Lothal established that the goods kept sealed were imported. However, in a seminal paper, Asco Parpola noticed that two stamp seals from the Tlotal were used to stamp three of the clay ceilings from the site. In particular, seal L6 was used to stamp clay ceilings 201 in combination with another Indus inscribed seal that also stamped clay ceilings 199, and clay ceiling L208 in combination with another Indus inscribed seal that also stamped L207. In addition, seal L37, an Indus standard seal in file steatite with a Rapa unicorn in front of a ritual filter, was used to stamp clay ceiling L210 in combination with another standard Hindu seal that is no longer recognizable. Although only seals L6 and L37 have been found, the impression of seals used at Lothal to stamp clay tags with single and multiple stamps of different seals provide the image of an interconnected network of shared administrative responsibilities between official and trusted with the use of a specific seal. This evidence, which complements the previous consideration on the discovery context and spatial arrangement of the clay ceiling found in the warehouse, provides further insights into the use of seals and clay ceilings at Lothal, and thus by extension in the Indus civilization, to control the, the local management of storage spaces rather than to secure the shipment of commodities. In summary, the morphological study of the ceilings back and sides enabled to reconstruct the type of closure devices that were sealed, which were found to include the closure of doors and rooms and of various types of movable containers, such as pottery jars, wooden boxes, and fabric bags or sacks. While most of the sealed doors and containers have direct comparisons at contemporaneous sites in Western Asia, the Lothal Warehouse Cluster also includes impression of closure devices and containers that appear to be unique to the Indus civilization, such as wooden cages, containers of packages made from small reeds, and various types of lockers and structures.
The contextual analysis of the discovery context of the clay ceilings cluster within the so-called warehouse allows to assume that the ceilings had already been removed from the container they seal and were temporarily stored together in a container on an on a upper story for eventual accounting purposes. Although with less stratigraphic precision, the distributional setting of the clay ceilings and other artifacts found within the Lothar warehouse can be positively compared with that reconstructed in great detail for store room A340 in the late 4 millennium BC palace complex of Aslantepe in Turkey. In both cases, in fact, a cluster of clay ceilings fell down from an upper floor when the building was destroyed by fire, resulting in their concentration over just more than one square meter mixed with burnt debris. To conclude, all available evidence suggests that seal-based administrative practices were based on the so-called transcultural administrative sealing system also in the Indus civilization. This assumption is of particular importance also for reconstructing the use of the standard Indus stamp seals. In fact, in order for the seal impression to be bureaucratically functional, the stamped inscription had most likely to report by univocal personal identification of the seal users, most likely their names. My presentation is over, so thank you very much again for following my presentation and thank you very much Greg for inviting me.